Okay, family. I hope you guys are doing okay. Today, this is gonna be a very relaxed video. I wanna show you how I mix my four quart milk paint so that you guys understand how I get those beautiful cells. I know that this is something that's been creating a lot of uh, comments in every video I post and every time I go to post my work in Facebook, a lot of people ask me, how do I mix my paint? And I know that there's a shortage also on how to get the satin enamel paint. You know, they are in a shortage right now. So this is it, this is a new bottle, but I haven't used it in a while because I've been mastering how to work this one because I do get much better results with this one. I really like it. So I decided to put a video together mixing uh, mixing it so that you guys understand and, and, and get the benefit, okay? I have a lot of plans in the near future. You know, I'm going to be teaching classes very soon on a private, you know, sector and also uh, in the next paint expo that is going to be taking play, place in uh, August 30, September 1 and 2. I have two classes there. Um, I'm going to be using that mix there and show it to you in person. You will be getting a 12 by 12 and everything you need to, to get it done. But let's go to what we need now, okay? The mix is very simple. It's one part paint, milk paint, uh, one part house paint. It can either be semi-gloss, it can be satin enamel, it's house paint. You can use Burr, you can use Cherwin Williams, you could use whatever you like. I'm happy to have uh, the Cherwin Williams semi-gloss house paint. So it's one part four card, one part house paint, two parts flutterol. And then I'm gonna give you a trick uh, in order not to get cracks. Because normally the milk paint, when you leave a lot of paint in the after tilting, it tends to crack. And you know, you don't want that. So so let's see. I this is how I normally do it. I have a you know two and a half cup jar, but in order for you guys to understand what I mean by one part milk, one part house paint, and two parts, I'm gonna be dividing that into small cups. Okay, so this, this is a half cup uh, size uh, cup. So I'm gonna be using one cup for the paint, one cup for the house paint, two cups for the flutterer, and half cup for the mix that I use for the glue. And let me divide it so that you understand what I mean by half. So I'm gonna be using just half the cup, All right? This is how I prepare my glue. You see it's in a flutterer gallon that I have left. So I mix it three parts of uh, PVA, okay? Three parts PVA, one part water, okay? So again, in order for you not to get confused, the glue is three parts glue and one part water. What water do I use? I use the style water, so this is it. This is the mix that goes into my glue, okay? That's, when I say that I'm gonna be using half 
cup of glue, I'm using this mix. Three parts glue and one part water. So I think you got that pretty easy, all right? So let's just put it there so that you guys understand, okay? So let's give it a shake. Let's open this, this is a brand new, still close, so. paint I'm gonna strain the house paint because last time I saw some stuff there that I didn't like so I'm gonna just make sure that I don't have any this time parts of lateral which I'm also going to to strain okay I want to make sure that we don't have any stuff that we don't want there so you see I put one cup or half cup and then another one you see those clumps that's what I don't want in my paint so that's why I Always strain it. All right, so here we go. Nice. I'll just keep my area as clean as possible. So you see? Now, let's go for the half of the glue. I only have a little left here, so. That, that'll be enough. So, I'm gonna measure, Ooh, there you go. That glue there will be enough to prevent those crackings to, to form, okay? So that's very important when you're doing um, your pours, you know. You wanna make sure that you don't get cracks. So now let's put, this is the milk paint. Okay. Now we go for the house paint. with the flow trail. That's one. And two. And finally, the glue. Now you mix it well. Make sure 
sure that you incorporate all your ingredients very well. You can see it, it disappears. It doesn't form, form, you know, it doesn't form any mount or nothing. Anyway. I always tell people to add a little water depending on the consistency you like. But when I mean a little water, it's that, a little water. Not much. Because you don't want that to be too thin. But you don't, you don't want also to be too thick. Okay? Still a little more for my taste, okay? It all depends on what you're doing, you know. So, the paints that I normally do does not require that paint to be so thick. I always like, you know, I want it running and disappear. I don't want any. Okay. So when you're done with this, you get your desired bottle to store it or just use it from there, depending on what you're gonna do. I normally use um, ketchup bottles, as I call them, you know. So full carb, milk carb, that's the one, and I just put it there. Let me not fill it to the top because I do have another one and I can put the rest there. Very simple, I just scrape everything. And just put it in the bottom. have a bucket full of water and later on I will be just you know putting this cup there clean it and get rid of it in the back jar so that doesn't cause any problems in the drainage so as always every time I do some mixing I would like I like to show it to you guys so we're, we're gonna be doing a 12 by 12. And we, I haven't nothing, in, I, I don't have anything planned, but I just want you guys to, to see how it works. Right. This is, as I, as I told you, this is a 12 by 12 canvas. So I will be um, choosing colors um, I have a little left of the violet that I want to use. I want to finish this one. Um, I'm going to use that green-yellow. Everything you see is no silicone, okay? This is Master Touch with no silicone. Uh, let's see what else we can put there because I would like to let me let's put some metallic red I'm just you know getting colors for you guys to see and let me see if I can get a yeah let's get a copper copper would be nice there this is not too thick it's very thin so I don't know if that's gonna sink or not all right, we're gonna use that same 
cup because what I'm gonna try and I'm gonna show you guys okay when you see this painting that it's available for sale for you know you see that it created some beautiful effect in the outside and as well as the the outer sides you know that's done on purpose if I don't want them I, I, I can do it without them but I always like those to appear in in recent paints that I've done and they are very nice actually uh, you probably remember the challenge yeah I'm, I'm in the process of burnishing I, I did use it also you see you, there those cells are kind of a nice touch so I like it and the way I do it is once I pour the paint I make sure to go in the outside and add the same milk paint and I make sure actually that it goes under the pour so when I tilt the paint goes on top of that and then you when you go back it creates a, a small thin layer on top of that paint and it creates that beautiful uh, effect I don't want too much white to happen at the end. So what I normally do is also, I add a little, a little, just a little paint before adding the, the white so that it starts creating something nice down there, okay? So I did add it, you know, a little paint there. And then I start layering the colors. You can do it both ways. You can do it in the side. You can do very softly on top. But for this video, I'm gonna, just going to layer it down in the side of the cup so that you create what I'm looking for. Then I'm going to be adding the aqua green. I like these two colors together. I will probably do red next. Then I will do a little copper. Then I will add more of the white. And we can do a second layer. Let's do some more. See if we can find some. It's almost over, as I was telling you. See, it's almost empty now. And then we put a little green. Little red. some uh, metallic copper then I will add a little more white and all around okay so now I'm gonna be just doing like a, like I normally do. And now, here's what it, what I mean, you know, the same milk paint you can add in the outer ring, you can go below if you want, you know. Let's leave it there now. And you start, you know, 
to move it around. Let's begin by going to that corner there. You see, I finished, so I have to go back. Let's go to this one now. And let's go to this one. All right. This is another thing that I want to give you guys a hint. If you want to re reinforce some colors, you can just add them now because when you start tilting, you will get those. lines to show more so for example if i want to be uh, adding a little red i do it so i'm out of the purple so i'm going to introduce a little blue which looks nice too and you start and you keep doing your stuff you move from corner to the other corner I'm trying not to lose that's happening because I like it you see that's what I like about this technique See, it already started developing those cells in the outside. And I'm gonna leave the camera on so that you guys, when, I, when, I'm, when I'm editing the video, I will fast forward very fast so that you see how the, the cells get formed. Okay guys, it's been like 20 minutes. Let me get the cell out of here. And you can see closer how those beautiful cells develop. How nice the blue and the red that I added looks like. You see that the green kind of uh, sink a little, but it's a nice touch there. Right. I hope you guys like it. Please let me know. Make some comments. This one is going to be uh, added to my playlist so that you can find it easier in order to understand how I mix my paint. Um, I hope you like it. Subscribe, like, share. See you guys in the next one. Blessings. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Also, hit the bell to get notifications.